Oh, the oh, yeah. It's going to be a dandy. We've got the master of that big claw hold, the Death Wish. I'm talking about the Angel of Death. He's back, the six foot six, three hundred pounds. And Ross, I want to ask you about a few boats. First off, what is this about the Battle of the Masked Men? Well, everyone is familiar with the Archangel. He's been unbeaten here for several months. He's facing Conan the Great, the masked star from Mexico, who's considered the top wrestler of masked men in Latin America. Two different styles, two different masked men. It'll be interesting to see who truly is the superior one. It will be a good match. And also, I'm looking forward to seeing Lethal Larry Cameron. This could be his biggest test in an awfully long time. Yes, he's facing Strangler Steve DeSalvo, a former North American heavyweight champion. A real powerhouse. Cameron may finally meet his match when he faces DeSalvo. And we got a title on the line. The Commonwealth Mid-Heavyweight Championship. Bruce Hart against the Great Gamma. How do you see that one, Ross? It's going to be a tough test for Bruce. Gamma's been a long-time rival of his, and the two have exchanged the Commonwealth title several times over the years. Bruce is hoping to retain it, but it's not going to be easy. It won't be easy. You're right. And let's get right to the action, because it's happening right now. Right now. That wasn't very ladylike, Jim, as she deposited Desiree Peterson right out on the floor. We have just passed the five-minute mark in this boat. It's Casey Houston, 145, Edmonton, Alberta, against Desiree Peterson, 142, Kelowna, B.C. Ladies wrestling action. And right now, it is Casey Houston in control. She just put Desiree Peterson outside onto the concrete. Desiree trying to get herself back together. She had been choked pretty viciously on that bottom rope by KC Houston, and she's just getting herself back together. A nice forearm there by Desiree Peterson. She's making a bit of a rally after being on the receiving end for several minutes. A big elbow knocked KC right on her back. Look at KC bounce back. A lot of rule breaking here. All that I'm sure she learned from the Karachi Vice. In recent weeks, we've seen her seconding, as I've mentioned, Lethal Larry Cameron and the Great Gamma. And she's also been closely affiliated with Muck and Singh. And a lot of their influence has really rubbed off on her. Desiree, I think, trying to fight scientifically, but finding that approach won't work against KC. A small package there, but they're right in the middle of the rope, so the referee has to break that. KC Houston dominating things right now against Desiree Peterson in this ladies wrestling boat. I'll tell you, KC Houston has that mean streak in full gear. There's a suplex and a pin attempt. One, two, just a two count. She's trying again. If you don't get him the first time, you're not going to get him that second time. Desiree Peterson is being choked by the leg of KC Houston, and the crowd was screaming, choke, choke, choke. Ross Hart, I guess we can expect all kinds of skullduggery throughout this match from KC Houston. Certainly can, and the fans have let her know that they don't appreciate her rule breaking. And I think she's choking again there, Jim. A big rivalry between these two, and they went at it with a vengeance right from the opening bell. Whoa! A big elbow by KC Houston. She's and pretty pleased with herself right now. She does indeed. She does indeed. She was showboating to the fans there. Now here comes Desiree. Off the ropes. Catches the big knee from KC Houston. That knee certainly took the wind out of Desiree's sails. But KC can't put her away for the three count. Casey Houston in control. She picks up Desiree Peterson. Got her across her shoulders. She's got her in an airplane spin position. Is she going to spin her? She is indeed. Oh. Drops her down. Oh, Desiree this turned her around. It. Casey luckily close enough to the ropes. Yeah, she got her foot up on the ropes there, Ross. And Casey Houston coming back with a vengeance. A big... Punched right to the midsection of Desiree Peterson. Here comes a pile driver. No. She turned her right around, flipped her onto her back. Desiree, 
shaken up, and Casey Houston drops that big leg across the chest and throat area of Desiree Peterson. It is all Casey Houston. Seems that Desiree has really been overcome by Casey's rule breaking here, and she hasn't been able to shake off the cobwebs completely. Every time she gains a little momentum, hair pulling or eye gouging or a punch to the breadbasket seems to stop her momentum completely. And now she's got her in a chin lock. Could be a possible submission. And a little extra hair pulling as well, Jim. You can hear that crowd. They're yelling hair, hair, hair. And the young referee, IWA referee Greg Everett was checking it out and he can see there's hair being pulled there as Desiree Peterson gets her face rubbed across the canvas and there's a choke. That's not a chin lock, that's a choke. It definitely is a choke, Jim. She's being ordered to break. KC certainly has earned the one yellow card she's received. She may receive a few more, even a disqualification possibly for constant rule breaking. Well, they're both at close quarters right now. It's Casey Houston, the 145-pounder out of Edmonton. Desiree Peterson, 142, Kelowna. Oh, what a move. Casey Houston went flying into that corner, but she comes back with a vengeance. Casey was in orbit there, but she's come right back. They have to break because they're near the ropes again. Ten minutes, come on. Ten minutes. And we see Desiree in a body press position. She's fighting to keep her shoulders off the bat. Oh, a nice sunset flip there. This could be it, Jim. Not for long, only a two count. Just another two count. Both wrestlers making some interesting maneuvers with Desiree Peterson. It's mostly skill and style. KC Houston, it's a lot of skullduggery and brute force. And because of her rule breaking, she certainly earned the wrath of the fans. And Desiree has definitely been the favorite here. Here we go again. Oh. And Casey went for a ride right in our corner here, Jim. Desiree tackling her in the corner. And she's somewhat riled by Casey's rule breaking in this match. Whoa. Big knee there. And that might have softened Desiree for the pin. Yes, it did, but she had her feet definitely on the ropes. But to no avail are the fans' complaints going to change this victory around. And the deciding victory goes to Casey Houston. Now, let's go up to ringside for an interview with Jim Davies. Strangler Steve DeSalvo, I was talking a little earlier on with the man you're going to face on this card, Lethal Larry Cameron, the North American heavyweight champ, and he was extremely insulting. I guess that shouldn't surprise you. He said when he was through with you, your brain would be bouncing around inside your head like a BB inside a boxcar. Well, isn't that clever? Well, Mr. Cameron, if you want to trade barbs, I'll give you a little one. I believe it's an old one, an old proverb. They talked about when they transplanted Larry Cameron's brain into a bird, and the only way the bird flew was backwards. Oh, Mr. Ke What's this? This is the angel of death. What are you doing in here? Hey, this is my old buddy, Strangler Steve DeSalvo. How you doing, buddy? Hey, what a great, hey, what a great Christmas present this is. Me and my old buddy Strangler. You don't look too excited, Steve. What? Of course he's excited. This guy loves me like a brother. Man, we were closer than any two men could ever be. Well, Angel, one time we were, but I've heard some things that kind of upset me. I mean, uh, you still are a great wrestler. You still are a man that many people look up to. But Angel... I don't need a partner now. Steve, I don't care what you heard, and I don't care what these people say. If you remember back about four years ago, when you and I broke in here together, we were the most feared tag team this territory has ever seen. And I know that if you and I get back together again, we can rule this place like no two people ever have in the history of Stampede Wrestling. 
Come on, buddy. Don't worry about what these people are saying. You got your own mind. You're a man of means. Nobody has to tell you anything. Hey, baby, it's you and me, just like it always has, right? I hate to interject something, but I think I rule now. I think after tonight, I'll be the permanent ruler. Now why? Now why in the grace of God would I need you? I have with me right now the great Gamma, a legend of Pakistan. As I walk out here tonight, do you see anything around my waist? I certainly don't. Well, after I get through with Blondie tonight, I guarantee you will. Come you on, will. tonight, when we win the belt, we will have a Karachi-style very, very good party. We will have girls, we will have curry lamb, we will have everything. And, and don't, don't, don't forget the tandoori chicken. Oh, no, cannot forget the tandoori chicken. Because you we know cannot we forget them. We will do a very good celebration, Karachi-style. And we will do that anything the you want. And a tandoori chicken. Oh, the tandoori chicken is very, very fit. Yeah. Another thing, you know, I'm getting sick and tired of my waist being so bare. And so so, so heavy as well. Thousands and thousands of my fans coming up to me and asking me, Gamma, when are you going to take that title away from that wimp? Because we are sick and tired. That wimp and blondie you're referring to is Bruce Hart, obviously. And you've assumed already before the match that you're going to win. Is there any doubt in your mind? There's no doubt in my mind, and there's no doubt in my manager's mind. The outcome is obvious. Only he knows it too well, and he's afraid to come out here and face me. Because like I said, Thousands and thousands of my fans have asked me, Gamma, when are you going to take that title away from that win? Because we want somebody that looks like a champion, somebody that represents us well, somebody that we can be proud of and walk down the street. I said, this is the man we want to represent us as a champion. And I'm not going to let my fans down tonight. I can guarantee you that. Well, Gamma, obviously you're taking Bruce, one of your longtime nemesis, is very lightly. And it's going to be a tough battle for both of you. I'll admit that. I'm taking him lightly. I'm not taking him lightly at all. I'm just saying that I'm going to win. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. The Great Gamma later squaring off against Bruce Hart for the Commonwealth title. A battle it'll be. North American heavyweight champ. He's having a running argument with some of the fans right now. It's a different kind of bout that that he's going to face tonight and I'm talking about he's going up against a man who bills himself as the world's strongest man strangler Steve DeSalvo and he also has some very unkind words for you Lethal Larry he says you're all talk and no action well let me tell you something JD there's an old saying that goes like this loose lips sing ships well I've been accused of loose lips JD but no one been able to sink my ship yet and Steve DeSalvo, it sure won't start with you. Yes, Steve DeSalvo, somewhere in your time, you were the legend. And somewhere in your mind, you still might be a legend. But Steve DeSalvo, this is my time. And this territory is not big enough for two legends. And let me tell you something else, J.D. If you take Steve DeSalvo's brains and put it inside a woodpecker, it will bounce around like a BB in an empty box car. You know something else, J.D.? I also heard that Steve DeSalvo was so scared that I wouldn't be surprised if he, too, was a no-show tonight. Lethal Larry Cameron, he doesn't just beat his opponents, he destroys them. We'll be right back with more wrestling action right after this. It's been all action since the bell rang in this one, Jim. It certainly has. We're approaching the five-minute mark in this boat. Slated for one fall, 30 minutes, the Archangel, 245 Atlanta, Georgia. Conan the Great, 238 Mexico City. And right now, it appears that the Archangel is a little bit leery of getting back into the ring. As timekeeper Tommy Carr tells us, we have just passed the five-minute mark in this boat. Conan the Great, the Archangel, and it has been all Conan thus far. Well, it appears that Conan has been out wrestling his opponent, and that's frustrated the Archangel, who uses more power and strength. And uh, Conan doesn't rely just on strength, but a lot of agility and uh, an excellent technician on the mat. You see many holds that Conan's applied, never ever applied by other wrestlers.
both men sizing each other up now as they lock up. A pace rake there by the Archangel. It appears the Archangels now are relying simply on a rule-breaking approach to counter the speed and the agility of the Arch of uh, Conan the Great. Excuse me. <laughs> Referee Greg Everett shows a yellow card to the Archangel. The Archangel looking menacingly at the referee, but doesn't take it any farther, thank heavens. Right now, it's the Archangel taking that dominant position in this bout against Conan the Great. Early on, totally dominated by Conan, and now the Archangel having his turn. The momentum has clearly shifted towards the brute strength, sheer physical power approach of the Archangel, and he's got He's got Conan in a great deal of difficulty, Ross. He certainly does. A couple of right hands really staggered Conan. The referee's cautioning the Archangel. Now he's going after his man again. And he's choking on the ropes and he won't break. Now he's about to hurl him in the corner, but it's reversed by Conan. What's going on here? Oh, a tremendous move by the Archangel. A sunset flip. And he shows that he can wrestle as well, Jim. No doubt about it. Great acrobatic oh, move. Here's the package. small package. One, two, just a two count. The Archangel just getting out at the last moment. Conan complaining about the slow count. And he got jumped from behind by the Archangel, who isn't wasting a second as he throws Conan the Great outside the ring onto the concrete. And he's getting a bit of a talking to by the referee after that maneuver. Well, we saw quite a flurry of action there. Some high-flying moves even by the Archangel. But it appears now that he's going to take the fight right out onto the floor. A sledgehammer blow right to the back of Conan. The Archangel has been frustrated by Conan's maneuvers and high-flying abilities that have really kept him off guard and certainly Conan has made a better showing against the Archangel than many others who've tried and failed that is why he's maintained such a long unbeaten string all right they're both back in the ring and here comes a little action off the ropes the Archangel grabs him around the neck puts him down on the canvas one two whoa what incredible strength by Conan he just picked him up and fired him off but Archangel up in a shot and he's right on top of Conan the Great I'll tell you both men obviously in superb physical condition and both men wasting no time going after their opponents certainly not the Archangel now wearing his opponent out with a lot of forearms and knees to the back area and uh, Conan suffering quite a bit right now the Archangel has tremendous upper body strength, and when he hits you with a clothesline or a forearm, it's like a bus running you over. Off the ropes goes Conan again. He missed with a clothesline, the Archangel, and a high-flying body press. Only a two count. And look how fast the Archangel recovered from that. He got up very, very quickly, probably less than a second to get back into the aggressive position. And he puts a big fist into the face of Conan, and Archangel was shaking his fist. I think that hurt him as well as Conan. Working him over on the ropes. Conan getting choked, and he gets fired back onto the canvas as we approach the 10-minute mark in this Battle of the Mass Titans, the Archangel, 245 Atlanta, against Conan the Great, 238 Mexico City, Mexico. It's been a great bout, Ross. A real seesaw battle back and forth. The Archangel goes for a dive, and look where he ends up. Conan smartly moved out of the way. Whoa! And that move may have been costly for the Archangel. And here comes Conan. Look at this move. A somersault and a clothesline. Tremendous agility there by Conan. As he did a roll up right into a clothesline. Throws the Archangel on the ropes again. He dove right at him. This might be it. 
Very close to a three count. Very. Seven eighths, Jim. Very, very close. A lot of people are concerned about the speed of that count and the crowd. They think that Conan should have had his hand raised in victory. Right now, though, Conan not wasting any time going right after the Archangel. There's a turnaround, and Conan goes into the corner. Archangel comes in. Oh, ho, ho! Right out onto the arena floor goes the Archangel, and he really mistimed that move. I don't know if he can get up from that. He went over the top rope all on his own. He was not put over by the by Conan the Great, thus no disqualification, but he landed heavily on the concrete. And He's quite shaken up, Jim. He Very slow indeed. to get back into the ring. And the momentum definitely now in Conan's favor. Conan now picking up his man, firing him down on the canvas, and Conan's going to fly. He's going up to the top rope. There he He's comes. Up. He's up there. Here he comes. A big what a splash. One, two. Just barely the Archangel kicked out again. Conan sensing victory, can't quite put his man away, but he's going off the top again. Oh, the Archangel the has an the ally, Angel, the, Angel the Angel of Death. Death comes in the ring. Outside interference, and that will cost the Archangel the victory. Outside interference the Death by the Death. Angel of Death. Outside interference, it cost Conan that bout. I cannot believe it. Conan must be very upset. He's getting pounded around by the Angel of Death and the Archangel inside the ring. What a schmozzle. Let's go up into the ring with Ross Hart. Conan the Great, a brilliant display of speed, agility, and aerial maneuvers. But unfortunately, the question of who the better masked man wasn't settled tonight because of outside interference by the Angel of Death. I don't know what business he had coming in to the ring. Ever since I got here, Ever since I got here, every town I go to, somebody jumps in my match. Dark Angel, I think he's a fugitive on the run. I'm gonna rename him the Ark Fugitive. Shellhead, that just got in the ring, I, I've never even wrestled the man, so I don't know what he's doing in here. I think it was a conspiracy between the gang of three, and that includes lethal Sherry Cameron. That's right, Sherry, because you got a hairdo like a woman, huh? Why can't you get me a match? Well, I can be one-on-one -on -one with no outside interference. I had him down twice. The referee late counted me. I, you're, you're as good as gone. You're finishing the fans' eyes. And let me tell you something, Angel of Death. I got a Christmas present for you, brother. You ain't never gonna forget. He's six foot six, 320 pounds. How will you cope with the size and weight advantage he has? I'm not gonna get into cliches. You know what they say, the bigger they are. That's all I gotta say, brother. That's right. Certainly. Conan the Great. For all my fans in Mexico, in Miami, Arriba Mexico. Huh? Thank you very much. Right, you. A brilliant display. streak in lethal Larry Cameron tonight. He vowed he was going to make short work of Strangler to Salvo. Few believed him, but right now it may be possible unless De Salvo is able to make a major comeback. We know what he's capable of, but he hasn't had that opportunity in this match. He's got to clear his head. De Salvo has to get his senses together, but he's not going to get any chance from Cameron. Cameron not letting up on his man for one moment. Springs him right off the ropes there. Big right hand by Cameron. Well, all I can tell you is that obviously Cameron has some fear of DeSalvo, otherwise he would not have ambushed him while the ring introductions were just being made and the referee was inspecting DeSalvo. DeSalvo is looking like he could come back. Yes, he drives the head of Cameron into the turnbuckle, but Cameron comes right back with an eye gouge. DeSalvo just can't seem to shake off the cobwebs. Cameron going right after him again. 
Oh, a nice reversal there by DeSalvo, and boy, did he level him with that clothesline. Took Cameron right off his feet. A big clothesline. Both men are down. DeSalvo, as a result of some of the pounding he took earlier, Cameron from that huge clothesline by the man with the 26-inch arms. Still staggered. Now it appears that Cameron once again has taken command of the match. Only a two count. Few can match Steve DeSalvo for sheer strength or that, power. That's Lethal right. Larry Cameron is maybe dispelled that a strong man is invincible with his attack tonight. But certainly DeSalvo is not out of this match yet, but he's taken an awful pounding, Jim. Few would have survived this long. Well, two yellow cards already for Cameron who rakes DeSalvo across the back. And DeSalvo still hasn't had a chance to really get himself together. He only managed that one clothesline. The rest of the time, it, he, it has been all Larry Cameron. Big turnaround. Oh, and he catches him with a boot coming in right into the midsection. Cameron going after him now. Big right hand. And this has been anything but scientific, this match, Jim. DeSalvo simply can't gain any momentum whatsoever. He's taken an awful pounding, and except for a few brief rallies that have been stopped by Cameron, this match has been pretty one-sided. What a DDT there, though, by DeSalvo. Caught Larry not looking at all, drove his head right into the mat. That shows you the power of the strong man, the 292-pounder out of Los Angeles. He'd been beaten up severely, and yet he had enough wherewithal to come back with that. Oh, both men just clotheslined each other, and both men go down in a heap. And that shows strength with Steve DeSalvo's durability. He's taken a tremendous pounding, and he's not out of this fight yet. That collision there stunned both men who are on the mat now. DeSalvo appears still the more dazed. A football-style tackle, though, sent Cameron right to the floor. And it looks like Strangler Steve DeSalvo is finally back. He's going outside. He's going out after the lethal one. It's going to happen here now, Jim. Oh, DeSalvo going right after him with a vengeance, and he's plenty hostile. Look at him go after Cameron. Big right hand and a forearm to the head. Cameron now fighting back, and it's turned into a slugfest. The referee's losing control of this one, Jim. The referee is counting. The referee is counting. They're both outside the ring. This could be a double countout. It is. It'll go into the record books as a double countout, but they're still going after each other. Totally out of control. Both men hammering away at each other. Whoa, it is mayhem, absolute mayhem. I'll tell you, a wild bout. Both men counted out outside the ring. Let's go into the ring right now with Ross Hart. Strangler Steve DeSalvo, you never really had a fair chance in that match. You were ambushed from the start, and then Cameron ran at the end, and uh, the action spilled out onto the floor, a double count out. Summation doesn't need to be said. The people could see what happened. What happened was what I thought would happen. Cameron, I knew you weren't man enough. Of all the champions I have faced at Abdullah the Butcher, the most feared man in professional wrestling, and what happened with him? He never ran. Bad News Allen, he never ran. We fought blood, tooth, and nail. He never ran. Davy Boy Smith the same. He never ran. But you, Larry Cameron, when your time, yeah, you could have jumped me. You hit me. You had the advantage, but the advantage was mine at the end, and that's when it counts, because that's when you were going to be a beaten man, the next champion. Yeah, you can't face it, Larry Cameron. I won't say let's hold back all the rules. I don't want to say let's not have a referee. Let the people determine what kind of a match we should have, because Larry Cameron, no matter what it is, the outcome will be in Strangler's favor because the Strangler does not lose. 
there's only one thing that I do. I get revenge. And when Strangler gets revenge, it's not going to be a one, two, three, Cameron. You're going to be punished. You're going to be beaten. You, Larry Cameron, will fall as all the demigods in the past have fallen. You, Larry Cameron, you will be hurt. Larry Cameron, your time is near. If you can, write your will. Make sure your life insurance policy is paid up because the Strangler is going to get his revenge. Strangler Steve DeSalvo, many indeed feel he is the one to finally bring the title reign of lethal Larry Cameron to an end. Now, let's go down to ringside with Jim Davies and the lethal one, Larry Cameron. Lethal Larry Cameron, you still have the belt, but nothing was really decided. Both men counted out outside the ring. That can't give you much satisfaction. That's right, J.D. Uh, it was, nothing was settled tonight. Steve DeSalvo came in, he gave, it all, he gave it his all. He just like everybody else to come in and face the lethal one. You have to rise above a level that you're normally capable of functioning at. And tonight, Steve DeSalvo will rise above that level. And, just, and that, that's, the, that's the only reason, the Sabo, that you last as long as you did. You was able to rise above your normal capability. But I promise you, next week, next time, it will not be the end result. You will be counted one, two, three, and you will go down like everybody else, Steve the Sabo. Jim Davis, I tell you and I tell everyone else, I say the time and time again, Steve the Sabo, you are just another psycho fisher lamb. You are being led to the altar to be slaughtered by the lethal one. And never, ever forget that. You might have been a legend in your time. You might be a legend even in your mind. But like I said before, this is my time. I'm the legend. This territory is not big enough for two legends. And Steve DeSalvo, you will soon find that out. Lethal Larry Cameron, he's still the champion, and he is still confident. We'll be right back with our main event right after this. Big slam there by Gamma, and the leg drop. There's no love lost between these two, Jim. They've been bitter rivals for many years. Gamma most recently held the title until he was dethroned by Bruce Hart. He insisted that he was jobbed of it, and he's anxious to regain the title, and I'm certain at any cost necessary. These two wrestlers, as Ross has told you, know each other very well. There are no secrets between these two. They know what each other is capable of doing. They both respect each other. Perhaps it's a grudging respect, but they do respect each other. But there is, as Ross told you, no love lost. Not only a championship bout, but a grudge match of the first order. It certainly is. Big knee there in the corner in the midsection by Gamma. And a big right hand. Bruce is weathering quite a storm right now. Gamma's trying to weaken him sufficiently, maybe set him up for his patented cobra hold or a knee off the top. Two of his finishing moves, but he's doing a lot of rule breaking right now. And referee Greg Everett in a bit of a particular situation, I think that he'd be tempted to give Gamma another warning if it do did not mean he'd be disqualified. I'm sure he doesn't want to end the bout with a disqualification by the referee. He wants them to fight in there, but right now with Bruce hung up on the ropes, getting pounded by Gamma while the, the weasel distracts the referee, I'll tell you, there is no reason why Gamma should not be disqualified. Absolutely not, and the weasel has no business being at ringside on the apron. The referee's job's tough enough as it is. It's understandable the referee doesn't want to call a disqualification in a title match, but certainly Gamma's tactics have warranted it. How many more times can it be warned for this constant rule breaking and fighting outside the ring? Well, he's taking it outside the ring once again. Drives Bruce right into right in the face, punches him again in the face. Bruce Hart goes down. Gamma is being counted outside the ring. He comes in, the count stops. But I don't know, it has been nothing but dirty tactics from Gamma ever since the opening bell, Ross. Certainly has. 
He said he would go to any lengths to take the title from Bruce, and he's living up to his word. Now he's going for a big vertical suplex. Can he get him up? Yes, he did. Bruce is in a lot of trouble right now, Jim. Just a two count. He had enough reserve to kick out there. I think just fighting instinct more than anything else. But he's badly weakened right now. Bruce Hart looks like he's on Strange Street. He's got the Cobra on him, Jim. Gamma's got his Cobra on him. I don't know if Bruce is going to be able to get out of this. This is Gamma's, Gamma's pet hold. He may have weakened Bruce Hart up enough that he can't escape. The arm goes down one more time, that's it. No, sir, it didn't go down. Bruce just hanging on, clutching on to his title for dear life. Can he do it? He gouges his way out. But Gamma gets the Cobra right back on again. Bruce has desperately got to get to the ropes, Jim. I don't think there's any other way out. Gamma just pouring on the pressure. That's a deadly sleeper hold. It is, as, a, as Ross told you, it's a submission hold of the first order. Bruce is fading fast. Just out of desperation, he charged toward the corner and Gamma hit his own shoulder against the turnbuckle. But the advantage wasn't Bruce's for long. Big slam there by Gamma. Ho ho! Bruce Hart got his knees up and Gamma got the wind knocked out of him. Can Bruce regain his senses? There's a mule kick. We're well past the 10 minute mark. This is starting to shape up as a great championship bout. A big clothesline by Bruce Hart. Bruce fighting back. Trying to shake off the cobwebs. Catches him with a drop kick there and Gamma now begging for mercy. Backing off. Bruce ha having none of it whatsoever. He's not in a conciliatory mood right now, Bruce. But he's going right after Gamma with a vengeance, fighting fire with fire. Here comes that big clothesline. Drove him right to the mat. This could be it. Uh, I can't tell. I think Gamma got his foot on the ropes. Yes, yes he, he did. did. Bruce That's is softening him up, though. That big flying clothesline, Ross, that almost did it. Here he comes off the ropes, another flying clothesline. That may very well spend, spell the end for Gamma. Gamma very shaken up. He's right on Strange Street right now. Bruce sensing a victory, goes for that big slam. Gamma isn't moving an inch. I don't think he's going to be able to move. Look out for the weasel. Just a minute here. The weasel interfering again while Casey Houston distracted the referee. Absolutely no call for it, Jim. The match should be stopped. Outside interference. The referee didn't see any of it. This can't go on. The Weasels turned the tide of this match. This is unjust. And how many times has that happened? Just when one of Gamma's opponents is getting set for victory, there's the big pile had the match all wrapped up, and the Weasel spoiled his victory. Now it looks like Gamma's got him. Big knee drop. And I'll tell you, the Weasel's interference may have cost Bruce Hart his championship. Now it's Gamma going up top. Oh, and look, Ross Hart is getting up. He's shaking the ropes. A little tip for touch. A little tip for touch. Jim, I couldn't take it. There's outside interference by the Weasel. I'm not going to let the title slip away from Bruce. Not under those circumstances. Bruce has no been way. disqualified, Ross. Oh, I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry my... Interference cost him the boat there. I couldn't take it, though. I couldn't stand by and see the weasel get away with it. Something's got to be done about him. Well, one outside interference goes unnoticed. Another one results in a disqualification, but the belt does not change hands. I'm going to try and sort things out up in the ring. Well, there was interference by your side, interference by the other side. You can't complain about that, Weasel. You were the first one to interfere. I do not do anything. I was standing helping Gamma. I did not do nothing. I, do, I will not do a hang of nothing. You know, this man sits in the corner, minds his own business yeah, all right. night long. He has a manager's license. He just sits out there. And Ross Hart is a man who has no business being at ringside. Now, this man here comes out here protecting your own brother, Bruce Hart. 
don't you be swinging no fist at me like that because I'll knock the hell out of you right here try on TV, Bruce Hart. Bruce, I know you're... Man, <coughs> all you did was got help from your brother who had no business Well, you had help here. from the weasel. What about that weasel? What was he doing in here? You got me disqualified. Got yourself disqualified. Okay, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on. Man. Hold on one second. What we're going to do, what we're going to do next week, this man, the weasel, is going to be handcuffed at ringside to Ross Hart. He's a manager. He's sad my own business. He you pulled the top man. rope on you me before me that. You faced me in a non-disqualification match. I'll let him be handcuffed to your brother or anybody else if you think he's interfering because I know he's not. I don't depend on him. I depend on myself. You've never won a match work. fair and square in your I life, Gavin. I haven't cheated in my life, Bruce Hart. Well, not once. I did everything fair and square. You put that title on the line. No disqualification. I guarantee you the floor red's going to come from that yellow body of yours. Okay, it's going to be no disqualifications. And I the good news anything. is that disqualif or er, is that uh, handcuff element at ringside with Ross Hart handcuffed to the weasel. That's going to be great. That'll keep him away. Gamma, next week it's going to end here right right here in this ring next week, Gamma. It's going to be all over for you. I'm going to kick your butt out of this town. Okay. Well, the fireworks were certainly flying right from our opener to our main event, and I promise you there'll be more fireworks next week on TSN Wrestling, but until then, bye-bye now.